A blessed day to you all, brothers and sisters, who are here today. You made it, and welcome to our worship. Both far and near, friends and families, relatives, glad to know you are one with us. We welcome you all in our Palm Sunday worship. Though we can see each other, we are apart from each other physically. The spirit of our Lord draws us together in this place. Amen? So as I say, God is good. May I hear you say all the time. And uh, I will say, and all the time, you say, God is good. So let us try it. I'm confident it will work. Here we go. God is good. And all the time, once again, God is good. And all the time, amen, amen. So let us prepare our hearts as we come to our worship at this time. And if you are able, will you please stand for our gathering? And I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 to 9. And uh, as I read, you respond. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them together, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fall of a donkey. Together, the disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting together, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Let us remain standing as we together sing the songs of praise to be led by the Grace UMC praise team. Oh, 
How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God.
then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Let us pray together. O Lord, our God, we are gathered here today with our spirits high in worshiping your name. Like those people who witnessed Jesus entering Jerusalem and proclaim, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. May we be true in our spirits proclaiming the coming of the Lord here and now. May we not be swayed by any forces nor powers that lead us away from you. Instead, with our Lord Jesus Christ as the King of our lives, we will be able to overcome the world. Bless our worship now, that in the midst of crises that we face, we can still give you our highest praise. Amen. Let us now hear the reading of the scripture to be read by Zebedee Camby. Psalm chapter 31, verses 9 through 16. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also, for my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become a, like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many. Terror all around as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The word of God for the people of God. And now for our song response, let us all sing thy word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me and nothing will I fear as long as you are near please be near me to the end thy word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and the light unto my path. Before sharing with you the message for today, let us uh, Prepare our hearts as we listen to a gift of music to be given to us by our Grace UMC Choir to be led by Sister Irene Baluya.
Brothers and sisters, let me ask you this uh, question. And this is a question that is an honest to goodness. One, how are you doing this morning? How are you feeling? This is the third Sunday that we have not gathered together as a church family. All of us, I believe, this might be the First time we have not gathered together in worship for a long time. Now we are in a three consecutive weeks of not gathering and still counting. For some of us, if not many of us, this place, Grace United Methodist Church, has a big part of our uh, lives. Here we have been welcomed, encouraged, prayed for, supported in many ways. Here we shared our laughters and tears. And it is in this church that we put our time, resources, and everything. Close relationships were built with members. The people of this church are our family. I am sure you can relate with what I am saying to you who are listening out there right now who love their church. I believe you miss those great things that you do. Some of us were perhaps married here, or your children were married here, and many of your kids were baptized where I am standing, and a number of you were baptized here yourselves. You have knelt at this chancel rails. How many times? You have prayed here how many times? maybe a hundred times or a thousand times. You have shared communion, and some of you even given your life to Jesus Christ for the first time in this place. It is in this particular place through which your spiritual life has grown. How many sermons have been heard? How much laughter and how many tears. The thought occurred to me just how many of you folks have been a part of this church for a very long time. And so isn't it strange to be worshiping online rather than in this sanctuary, especially on Palm Sunday? I mean, think about it. This is the first Palm Sunday in at least 50 some years that no worship service happening, especially to wave palms, palm branches this Sunday. I couldn't think it's happening, that we are not here together. 
This is not normal. But let us admit that the new normal is happening. So I ask, how are you today? How are you doing? You've been isolated for several weeks now, and I'm part of that. Some of you live alone. This social distancing stuff is getting old, isn't it? It is lonely, and we were not created to be alone. And it's Palm Sunday, and we are not together. So it's all right to be sad. It's all right to be a, a bit lonely and sorrowful. And it's normal to be hit by grief. And you know, I think these are some of the feelings Jesus was dealing with on that very first Palm Sunday some 2,000 years ago. How couldn't he have been? He knew what was coming. He knew what lay ahead. He knew that even though his disciples and the rest of the crowd so hyped as they waved palm branches and crowned him king, that in a few days, Judas would betray him, disciples would fall away, Peter would deny him, the religious leaders would plot to kill him, Pilate and Herod would sentence him, and soldiers would mock and beat him and nail him to a bloody cross. Jesus knew all this, even though on Palm Sunday, he was the honorary of a big parade as he entered the city of his death. And so in the midst of all this excitement, there is a deepening despair. There is sorrow. And Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, experienced misery beyond compare during his final week on this earth. Isn't it something that Jesus understands the very worst of human suffering? Always remember that whatever you are going through, no matter how bad it might be, Jesus Christ has been there. And he is there with you now. He can comfort you. He understands what you are dealing with. And he loves you. For Jesus is all out there in support with you and with me. That when we suffer, he suffers with us. And so, during the last week of Jesus' life, this particular scripture reading, Psalm 31, took on a meaning for Jesus. No wonder he quoted it from the cross. No wonder it must have been going through his mind the entire week. I mean, listen to the words again. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. My soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish. My strength falls because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. I am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me, for I hear many whispering. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. You know, if this is all there was, if the psalm ended here, if the story of Jesus ended here, if we ended here, this life would be nothing but a cruel joke. There would be no hope, no purpose. But in verse 14, we come upon a big but. And this but, it says, but I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. All these awful things are happening. I am riding toward my death, but I trust in you, Lord. My friends have all deserted me. I am being whipped and mocked and spit upon. But I trust in you, Lord. My mind is in torment. I know what is going to happen to me. But I trust in you, Lord. My body is being torn to pieces. The pain is beyond compare. 
But I trust in you, Lord. I have been nailed to a cross. People pass me by and mock. I can hardly breathe. But I trust in you, Lord. My times are in your hands. Into your hands I commit my spirit. These are the words of Jesus Christ. This is the faith of Jesus Christ, the one who said, I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. God has been present. God will continue to be present. And no matter what situation, Jesus knew this. Do you know? Do you know? Do I know? Many of us may ask ourselves, how can a person count one's blessing in the midst of such great suffering? How can a person possibly trust in God when one's life is filled with such sorrow, when strength fails because of misery and bones waste away? How can one say, you are my God, when they are a horror to their neighbors, a broken vessel? How can one even speak of the steadfast love of God when terror is all around and enemies scheme together to take one's life? How? Can it be that this psalm and life itself attest to the fact that God can be trusted? Can God be trusted? That God answers Jesus' prayer with a gift, the gift of trust? I trust in you, Lord, I say. You are my God. My times are in your hands. This is more than confidence that things will work out for the best. Jesus is confessing a new reality here. Trust God. Trust in God is the greatest gift the world will ever know. It was trust in God that enabled Jesus on the night he was arrested to say, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. It was trust in God that enabled Jesus to willingly give up his life on the cross. And God proved trustworthy indeed when on Easter morning, Jesus Christ rose victoriously from the grave. And because of Jesus' trust, because of what Jesus has done, because God is proven trustworthy, we too can receive from God the greatest gift, the gift of trust. We too can put our whole lives into his hands. And no matter what is happening around us, no matter whether we are all alone due to the coronavirus, no matter whether we are facing possible financial ruins due to this dread disease, no matter whether the world seems like it is going to end, we can say, but I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. You will save me through your unfailing love. Do you have this trust? Brothers and sisters, again, let me ask you, how are you feeling today? Do you have distrust? If not, pray to God until you do. And to make that moment begins, I am inviting you to the Lord's table, remembering the sacrifice he, Jesus Christ did and for the love that God shown to us. Let us prepare our hearts as we come and trust the Lord anew. Amen. Let us now respond to the message as we share our tithes, our offerings for the Lord's ministry.
Let us now dedicate our offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, sovereign over power and pain, glorious triumph and deep disappointment, we enter this Holy Week bringing our tithes and offerings to your altar and leaving them here in the hope you will send them to make the world a more loving and compassionate place. We are reminded through the scripture that you sent two of your disciples out to make the world ready for your coming. Go into the village, find a donkey, tell them the Lord has need. Remind us that your kingdom breaks into the world, not as a spectacle for us to witness, but as a parade where we are called to make a working contribution. We pray in the name of the one who comes not just for the parade, but for the cross at the end of it. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us now prepare our hearts as we come to the Lord's table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and fitting for us, Lord, to gather in this, your table. May we be led by your Spirit in opening our heart, though we are unworthy in your presence. We are here humbly asking for your mercy. And prepare us, Lord, as we partake of these symbols of your love, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his blood. And may this be a way for us, Lord, to be renewed, for us to be transformed, for us, Lord, to continue obeying your will. This is then our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night when he was about to give himself up for us, he took bread, give thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, take it, this is my body which is given to you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, give thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory. 
and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Now let us prepare our hearts. Let us gather together wherever you are. And let us at the same time partake of these great symbols of God's love to us. Come. Let us give thanks to God for these wonderful gifts of his love. Let us be in a moment of silence as we pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this wonderful opportunity that we can come together. Though we are apart from each other, we believe that we're two or three gathered together in your name and in, you are in the midst of them and assuring us of your peace that passes all understanding. And so now we give you all the glory for us gathered here, remembering what Christ did for all of us. Thank you, O oh God, for this wonderful blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, in our moment of communing with God, let us include in our prayers those we see on the screen. Now, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I would like to ask each one of us 
to be in that spirit of responding as we hear a very closing song to be sung to us by Ezra. And you are invited to respond while the song is sung. Bring your prayers to the Lord, your joys and your needs. It is also a time to renew your relationship with God and with one another. This is also an invitation to come forward to the screen or just by raising your hand or kneeling down where you are at as a way of surrendering our lives to the Lord. Accept Christ in our lives as our Lord and Savior. And make this day a time of repentance, a new beginning of our life with Christ, a new day of hope and trust, assured that God will always be in our side.
Thank you, O oh God, for this beautiful day that we have experienced your presence in this place. Thank you, O oh God, for your spirit is refreshing our souls. May we be blessed receiving the hope that you, you give that from this day and the days ahead we will be assured that you will be with us. That we can overcome the world because you are our God. And now brothers and sisters receive the blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you all, now and forevermore. Amen.